Hello, hi everybody. Uh, you'll excuse me. I'm. I was playing a really cool game, so I don't really want to stop. Uh, we started a little early. Maybe you all can help me. Um, this is a geolocator game written by my colleague Aicha um, Bosch, and uh, it's a city that's a melting pot of cultures, iconic skyline, lady holding a torch. Any any ideas on that? I'll go with New York, Bob. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Let's try this, uh, and we'll see. This is live running software, by the way. Oh, look at this. This is great. So this thing just keeps asking you cool questions. A city of art, love, revolution, iron lady. Artists and... Ooh, lovers a lot. Mm-hmm. Any any ideas? Anybody want to try this one? Anybody in the chat? Paris in the chat. What's this? Paris? Somebody yeah. said? Yeah, Paris. Paulo and Taz went with Paris. Oops, I spelled oh. Paul wrong. Look at that. That, was, a, Some that was actually a typo, right? Yeah, it is a typo. <laughs> uh, I, my French is bad, but it's at least I knew that one. Now, this is kind of a cool little co-pilot thing. Is it, it now changes to French. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is talk to it in French, and it will pivot to the other language. So since I really can't read it anymore, <laughs> um, let me ask this. How many lines of code do you think this uh, this this game took? Let me let me show it to you. And I, I think this is going to be pretty pretty exciting for folks, actually. Um, oops, wrong wrong screen. So here is the entire thing. It has a manifest that looks a lot like a Teams manifest, and one of the things in here is a declarative copilot, not to be confused with uh, DC Pardur, uh, but uh, it's actually a D. We call them DCs as well. <laughs> and then if we look at the declarative copilot JSON. That's it, folks. It's four lines of JSON with some instructions written in plain old English. Is it really code? That's a good question, I guess. Yeah, I think anything that could have a syntax error is code. Um, this does not require Copilot Studio as much as we love it. This works with Teams Toolkit or a text editor. And you just need to put these two files inside of a zip with a couple of icons, and you can upload it into Teams. As soon as this feature comes out, as um, Vesa mentioned, this is a preview. So I, what I was asked. What's the previous file? Can you show that? Pardon me? Can you show the previous file? Oh, sure. This is the manifest. And, and actually, we've got, um, I can even uh, share the code with you because even though. You probably don't yet have the copilot version. You need to run it. Um, you can absolutely grab, uh, take a look at the project itself, the README. Aich has done a great job of, of writing this up. So it's just it's just like a Teams manifest or an M365 app, but there's now a copilot extension. Last week, uh, you might have noticed the same thing. Copilot extension, we had a plug-in, and now we have a declarative copilot. And... That's it. So, Seb, what can you tell? So, Seb is here partly because he's a good guy and partly because he actually was instrumental in getting this feature done. Um, and we're improvising and everything is live. So that's and we have no slides. So that's uh, that's the way we roll here. That's how we do things here on the East Coast. Um, everybody, <laughs> I think I'm going to I'm going to take over the screen. I'm going to share. Please. Mine. Last time you came to this um, audience, Bob, you showed um, something called uh, the tray research uh, plugin, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, well, Bob, I did something pretty cool. I um, took the plugin and I made it a declarative copilot. So that's why you have the tray genie copilot right here up there. And the tray genie copilot has a couple of really nice features. For example, I can go on and ask uh, a Tree Genie Copilot, hey, let's go and find tree consultants with 
a particular skill. So let me go there. Let me do the same thing. Right now, uh, quick caveat here. We should see some what we call conversation starters that you configure yourself. Right now, they're not showing. So things mm. happen. Um, uh, so here I'm going to I'm going to say find trade consultants with Azure certifications. And what it's going to do, what you showed earlier, Bob, was just based on instructions. So we're using right. the LLM, the large language model that lives within Copilot, to use its memory, its understanding, its intelligence, or artificial intelligence, to drive the game. Here, Copilot has nothing, knows nothing about Trey and consultants, and especially remember our motto where it's always be billing. So we need to make sure that we can call something. So we're going to call here your plugin. So as I do that, I'm going to go, I'm going to call into um, Azure. We have that API running somewhere in Azure. Yep. And we're going to we're going to call it and we're going to come back with results. We're going to combine them together and give me a good list here. Uh, and this is very interesting. So now we have that. Uh, let me refresh the screen. We're going we're gonna to do it one 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 more time. Let's see how that goes. I'm sorry, I'm going back to dark mode. I'm going to put it back to to uh, light mode. I think it's easier for folks to see. Um, so I'm going go that here. So I can go, it's like my declarative copilot from here. I can, I'm going to go the exact same thing with Azure certifications. So let's try that. And if we don't see it, that's absolutely OK. We're going to dive into the code anyway and see how these things uh, could work. Well, maybe we don't have folks uh, with Azure certifications, which we had a couple of minutes ago, so that's quite interesting. <laughs> but um, it did say so always we'll, be billing. That's good. So that's, yeah. It always tells me always be billing. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll go back and I'll show code, uh, I'll showcase some of the code that we're using for that. So earlier, um, you, Bob, showed a really interesting um, uh, way of doing things where I was able to go, let me go and view here and do word wrap. So again, we're doing a very similar experience where we're providing a set of instructions here. We're, we're saying the tone, we're saying the context, we're reminding Copilot of always remember with the tray motto, which is always be billing. So Copilot and the declarative Copilot that we're using will always remind the user about something. Maybe it's to go to your docs, maybe it's to always be billing, maybe it's Maybe the fun fact of the day or celebrate the people that have a birthday today whatsoever. Um, so as part of that declarative copilot, there are a couple of capabilities that we can leverage. First one is our conversation starters. Those conversation starters are how you're going to interact with the end user to prompt them, to ask them to try your declarative copilot with ready-made prompts. So that way, you can select the most useful prompts that you can use, pr promote them to your users so that you can use them. So if I go back here, uh, for example, to uh, go back to try, try Genie Copilot or just even to Copilot, and here I can, you're going to see here a series of um, uh, prompts here. You will be able, with these conversation starters, to do the exact same thing. Right now, it appears that they're not. No, mine, mine are working. I don't know what's going on, uh, but yeah. The the demo effect, right? But we can deal with the demo effect. Um, so that's the <laughs> one thing. So um, a conversation starts. You will be able to do that. Other things you will be able to do is to connect a series of capabilities. By default, you can turn on three specific capabilities on um, a copilot. The first one is the... Um, it's all about grounding data or grounding your declarative copilot inside data. So there are three different capabilities. One, which is SharePoint. Um, here we have the ability to say, hey, you know what? Not only I want you to care about these instructions, but I also want you to care about the documents that live in that very specific SharePoint site or in this very specific SharePoint folder. So that way it's going to use this, the content that lives there and inject it as grounding data 
to reason over as people are prompting uh, yeah. the declarative copilot. So that's, that's really big. I've useful. been getting a lot of questions about that. Kind of like, how do I keep it from finding old documents and stuff like that? And it looks like it's uh, just a couple lines of JSON there to do that. Exactly. Still, we haven't really coded anything, right? Um, there are other capabilities. Um, one of them uh, being uh, the web. So you can enable web search as part of it. If you want to expand the knowledge of your declarative copilot to the web, you can also do that. And third, you can also ground it in graph connector data. So if you have... Yeah. Graph, if you're ingesting graph connectors in your own uh, environment, you can also ground it. Think about it. You have a database somewhere that has a series of um, service tickets. Well, you will be able to bring that. It's going to also remember, it's going to apply all the security and authorization on these items. And you will be able to uh, maybe find the most, um, um, I don't know, the, the the most recurrent themes um, in your tickets and do something with it. So that could be really interesting. So these are the three capabilities, one drive in SharePoint files, web search, and finally the um, uh, graph connectors. But you remember, Bob, but it, it's, it's not a great example because it did not call it earlier, but we can also bring your, your plugin data, your API that you're building, you can also call them. And that's what we're doing here. Yeah. So here we're saying not only we're going to use the out-of-the-box capabilities that come with declarative copilot, we're also going to extend it with actions. And these actions are in the form of plugins. So the same plugin you used last week is actually available as part of this specific copilot. And here, it's just going to go in there and identify what is possible thanks to the plugin that was created, where I know what I can actually have. I can get consultants. I can get user information, I can get projects, I can post billing hours, which is important because we need to remember our motto, right, Bob? Always yeah, you know, and, and you know what I like about this? So I, having been playing around with plugins for a while, that little that little thing, that box that opens up the plugins, I call it the plugin panel, but I don't know if that has an official name. You know, getting a user who is not the most tech savvy to click that button and know which plugins to use can be a little bit of a challenge, you know? And the way I think of this is every human in this meeting, every human I know, has some concept of special specialization. So if I walk into a building and I talk to whoever's at the front desk, that's like Copilot for M365. Now I have a question specifically about our consulting group. I want to go, I don't want to ask the receptionist, right, who has access to everything in the company now and and i have to word my question very carefully to make sure the receptionist knows i'm asking about consulting group here everybody has the idea of oh i'm going to go talk to the consulting expert i'm going to go talk to the hr expert i'm going to go talk to some other expert and then you've trimmed down the information you've specified what apis to use you've given it specific instructions and there's your expert and now you can just say you know, who should I assign for Azure project? And it's going to know that you're talking about that scope of the consulting group and which API to use, et cetera. Exactly. And not only it's going to know, but on top of that, as a developer, you will be able to tap into the, the co-pilot knowledge on top of it. So you're going to be able to bring capabilities or data coming from SharePoint and assign it through your APIs, it's going to be able to flow the, con the content from one to the next. Um, something also which um, I see as a question in the chat is where, like, wh where's the AI model here? Where, where is the, the, the open AI thing? Where's GPT whatsoever? Well, in this case, and that's one of the beauty of declarative copilots. You're actually running on copilot. You're running on the model that copilot hosts for you at no cost. You just need to have the license, and that well, is there's it. There's a so cost. Leverage. I mean, there's a cost, but presumably they've already. This is going to be for people yes. who are already going to use Copilot inside their organization, and then Absolutely. there's no additional Absolutely. cost. And if you're the ISV, your customer is paying that cost. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And let's talk very quickly about that ISV thing you were, you were, uh, uh, you just talked about. Is how do you get started? How do you actually get that app running? So this is still in preview. So right now you will not be able to utilize any of these things, but I want to give you a little bit of a glimpse of what's coming up. So we have built this capability inside the Teams toolkit. So that's going to require the latest and greatest version of the Teams toolkit. What you're going to do is simply, you're going to use our, our CLI very soon. We're going to also have the same experience in the UI. Where you're going to say Teams app new, and where one of will be to select a declarative copilot. Let me show that a little bit like this. So it's, well, whatever. So you're going to be able to select a declarative copilot. Do you want to have a declarative copilot, which is just a skeleton? Um, without a, a plugin, or do you want to also have it a, a plugin that is using Azure Function? So we're really making the mm -hmm. pro code um, experience super simple. Let me go to the basic declarative copilot very quickly. I'm going to say, uh, let's say uh, M365 demo. It's going to create it very rapidly. And now I can just do code on the M365 demo. <clears throat> and you're going to have a fully scaffolded and available declarative copilot already in there. It has all the bits and pieces you need to get started. So that's really your starting point from where you can expand on and your app package is available here where you have your declarative copilot. Look at all that and code. Wow. <laughs> you look at that. Four lines of code. Boom. <laughs> copilot. And that's that's really where we want to, to focus your attention is there is a lot of high level gain to do with that. Lots of the cost benefit here is amazing because in a very few number of lines of code or JSON, or, and then if you involve plugin, you actually have real code, but really, really rapidly, you will be able to generate these um, kind of things. And very rapidly also, you will be able to go in here, provision that and be able to see that directly inside M365 and in your Copilot app. So. That's what we wanted to showcase today. I hope this is useful. We're looking at somewhere this summer for the, the experience to be available. We're definitely come back, we're gonna come back here to let you know that it's all available for you to try it out. And yeah, Excellent. these do work in the app store to, to, to Drew's question actually. So these can run, these will be, these can be sold in the app store when they come out. So, sorry, I know we're running over. Back to you, Vase. Okay.